look. This is why we haven't been getting as many eggs. Welcome to Wild Hope Homestead. Good morning, chickies. What's everybody doing on this chilly morning? Chilly but beautiful morning. Put a bit of grass through the cage for them. I can't remember if I said, but I also get it for them some grit, some moisture grit. It's not a good idea to give them grass and other things to eat unless they've got grit. Make sure they have some grit so that they can grind it up and digest it properly. Still scared of the grass at the moment, don't you? Put it on two spots because they are over it. I was just picking tangerines from the tree and accidentally stood on a chicken. And of course, I had no idea she was there because she was right under these grasses and look. This is why we haven't been getting as many eggs. There's one there too. Oh my goodness. This explains a few things. Not sure if they're all hers, but that's a lot of eggs. Oh dear. Tangerine picking time. Where are my little helpers? Do you get distracted? What are you doing? Oh, you found a lemon. And you put it in the trunk. Oh, Basil, you're not... <laughs> you put it in the trunk. Good job. Watch out, Basil. You're not supposed to be on the team. <laughs> Should we get uh, one more? One more. Good job. Basil. <laughs> I think I've found the one whose tail I accidentally stood on. Daughter of Anise, the one at the back. She's missing a few tail feathers. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were in there. Like, I mean, the grass, it's so dense. And it, on that side by the fence particularly, I've put some branches on top of it now to try and stop stop her from laying under there or she could just lay around the other side but it's so dense in there I just couldn't see oh. she'll be alright you got a chickie did you you got Leslie nope well oh, we really need to get back to this branch jungle hello how are you doing Hey, you doing, girl? Do you want to have a pet of the chickie? Yeah, nice gentle hands, good girl. She nice and soft. That's her gentle, that's her comb. 
Yeah, good girl. Such a gee. Those are her feathers. Yeah. No. That's her, oh careful, that's her beak. Comb. That's her nose. Yeah. Oh, I'll snuggle the chucky. All right, we'll let her go. <laughs> we'll let her go. Off she goes. <laughs> so, 15 eggs that we got from the forbidden nest. Uh, um, they're all dirty. I don't know how old they are, so I'm just going to chuck them in the compost because... We could do the float test but in the water but we've had that much rain lately. Um, I don't really trust any of them. This up too much, otherwise, you guys are gonna escape into the wilderness, aren't you? Look at you! Whoa, hold on. I was just trying to have a closer look at some of these blue ones. I've got some nice colouring showing through. Look how dark that one is. Hopefully, they'll have good lacing. There's one up the back. Whoopsies. We've got some escapees. Hold on. Oh, oh no. Hold on, hold on, somebody went under. Come here, come here. Oh, okay, we're gonna have to shut this. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where's that one up the back? Give me a little chicken. This one here, this one's got some nice looking lacing. Hold on, hold on, little one. Where we have that, whoop. We have the lighter blue. And then the feathers edged in the dark slate blue. But we'll see. We'll see how you all turn out. So far, signs of good colouring. Not any super light blue ones. That one there is a little bit lighter blue. But still got okay lacing. I have read that colouring passes more through the male down to the offspring so colouring is more likely to be influenced by I keep getting confused these chicks are actually fathered by Tom Haverford I'm getting confused because Ron's in the corner at the moment with girls and I'm collecting eggs for hatching from them Tom Haverford has nice dark blue colouring so It'll be interesting to see how these chicks turn out, but the girls that he was with, the mums of these ones, either had not so great colouring or suspected not so great colouring in their lineage. They had siblings who had not so great colouring or mums. Uh, so, yep, we'll see how they go. Good morning, Basil. How are you doing on this windy day? Some views. Getting a bit fluffed up. Let's check it. a big worm, isn't he? Be very gentle. Look after the worm. Yeah, you put him back in the dirt. He will, he will help the kale. Yeah, 
put him back in the dirt so he can go. Off he goes. Yep, you leave him there. Good girl. Just doing some more weeding in the front plot while the sun is shining. This funny looking parcel arrived today. Yep, still a funny looking <laughs> item to get in the post. These are my elderberry cuttings um, that I bought from Koanga. This is, um, is it tied? It's got a lot of hay around it to keep it moist. That's interesting. Oh yeah, it's got a rubber band. Uh, it is Elderberry Adam. Adam is the um, cultivated variety. It's supposed to be a bit smaller. The height of it grows a bit smaller and the berries, elderberry is uh, supposed to be a bit bigger than just the normal species. So. I figured I'll just start Mommy. with the best Mommy. culinary one. Mommy. <laughs> oh yeah, so it was three cuttings I bought and I've sent four, so that's nice. Two of them are a little bit smaller. So I shouldn't be able to go wrong with four cuttings, right? <laughs> I've got to get them potted up now. There we go. Elderberry Adam. And fast growing too. So happy days in the elderberry department, hopefully in the future. So I ordered these cuttings back in February and they've just arrived here at the end of July. So it's it takes five months of waiting, but they sell like hotcakes. So you've got to order them at the time and then they send them out in winter because that's the best timing for fruit tree cuttings. I've bought a horseradish plant which arrived today along with a peppermint plant which is all packaged like this. Whoops, don't mind the sun. Uh, so I'm going to get those unwrapped and potted up into pots. I was going to plant the horseradish in where the sorrel is but I decided it's probably better to plant it in a pot. Yes. So this is what the horseradish looks like. And this is the peppermint. Oh, they look pretty weird, but they should grow fine once they're in some good potting mix. I've planted my horseradish in here and my peppermint in here. And pots on the deck. Since I'm not planting the horseradish in this corner anymore. I can put some more Egyptian onions in here. So I've pulled some out of the seed tray. So these ones have rooted nicely in the seed tray. Very nicely. All those heavy roots there. Meanwhile, Angus is almost finished cutting up all the bits of wood from over here. Yay! Good job, buddy. Well, Angus finished cutting up all the bits of wood and we got it all cleared up, so it's looking heaps better now.
joining us in today's vlog guys choose to grow hope and we'll see you next time bye